be. And it's just such a controlled, inventive, and beautifully odd movie. I mean, anytime Andy Garcia pops up as Tommy Bahama, Tommy Bahama and gives you know, someone a pep talk, you kind of have to watch it. So yes, you may not love Barb and Star. It may not be on your wavelength, which I totally get. But for me, I think it just worked perfectly. I just was able to really get on the, the movies. It just worked and it, and it spoke to me. And I just, I just keep quoting it. I mean, I just want to mix soda. I just want to, I mean, you know, it's crazy too. Where this movie takes place on the map is where I grew up in Florida. It's called Hudson, Florida. We have nothing like this around. Fine. But it's kind of like, I was like, man, does this take place near my house? I was expecting like a Florida project or something. I don't know. Like an A20 Zola. What, the Florida Project, Spring Breakers, not Cocoon. Maybe, yeah, Cocoon, Too Fast, Too Furious. Either way, A24 really gets Florida. But this movie is just bright and colorful and bonkers and just very funny. But you have to, you have to rule with it. This is not something where, I mean, I could see people just crossing their arms immediately going, I don't like it. Just giving up on it. But just sit back, relax, and try to embrace Barb and Star. And I think you might really love it. So that's my top 10 of the list. And I also have some really random lists for you since, I mean, I love random lists. And if you've been listening to movie films and flicks where we like the weird here, but I'm going to go with my, my favorite performances. So I'm going to say Kristen Wiig, Annie, Annie Mumolo and Jamie Dornan from Barb and Star, Nick Cage from Pig. I'm going to go Idris Elba, Margot Robbie, David Dasmalchin and Danielle Melchior from the Suicide Squad uh, from Cyrano. I loved Peter Dinklage, uh, Haley Bennett and Calvin Harrison Jr. I think they all excel in that movie. I already talked about Mia Vashakowska from Bergman Island. Adarsh uh, Gurov from The White Tiger. I can't forget that movie. I love it. Also, The Novice, which, man, that movie's excellent. Check that out. I think Isabel Furman is fantastic in it. It's just such a, you know, you watch a Damien Chazelle movie about the pursuit for greatness and, and what it costs you. This is This is the way I see it, The Novice. I mean, watch this movie. It's not... It's gnarly. And it, and the score, the cinematography, it's so mature. Uh, I, I think it's, yeah, I, I think it's probably the best directorial debut of the year as well. So definitely check that out. Then I want to say Leah Sado from France. Uh, it's a French film, but it's about journalism. And she just fully commits, and I love her in that. Then we'll go, oh, uh, Harriet Sansom. She, she's in Licorice Pizza. She just plays this casting director with Alana Haim, and it's it's probably one of my favorite moments of 2021. I'll say Brittany Hall from Test Pattern. Such a good movie. That whole cast of masks. There's just four of them. They're great. Udo Kier from Swear Swan Song. Swan Song. Look that up. He really thrives. The trailer's not good, though. Then I, I really enjoyed Catherine Newton and Kyle Allen in The Map of Tiny Perfect Things. And I got two more left from you. I'm just reading a list. You probably love this. But I want to say Sam Richardson from Werewolves Within. He is... I also liked him in Tomorrow War. He had probably the best Will Smith Miami joke of, of any 2021 film. So I dug that. But Sam Richardson, where it was within, just the way he sells everything, the way he doesn't sell things, the way he reacts. I mean, he really makes where it was within one of my favorite movies of the year. Now, a couple, a couple quick things for you. So I would say my best aquatic based creatures of 2021, King Shark Suicide Squad, Reba McIntyre, Barb and Star, The Great Protector from Shang-Chi, The Haunted House from The Deep House. There's a movie this year, a French film about two scuba divers who go down to a haunted scuba dive into a haunted house. Bonkers. Ryan Lost Dragon has some great stuff. Also, let's see. Oh yeah, Undine. Undine. You can't go can't go wrong with that. So I've right now I've told you the most popular MFF episodes of the year, my favorite performances, the best aquatic based creatures. And I just also before we're out of here, oh, my best where uh 10 best horror films of the year. We talked about this on the horror podcast but i didn't really quite drop my top 10 so i'm gonna say malignant werewolves within meander willie's wonderland lamb geez louise thank you zanande boetes uh frequent movies films of flicks collaborator she's also uh did the meander episode she told me to watch meander she didn't do the episode but she recommended it to me and it's amazing another really good french film and then there's titan Woo! gnarly picture thank you neon uh, y'all are absolutely destroying it Last Night in Soho, which I really can't shake. The, when I first watched it, I, I enjoyed it. But now that I've been thinking about it, which makes sense because it's an Edgar Wright film. And then the, I'm going to round it out with Shadow in the Cloud because Chloe Grace Moritz front kicks a gremlin. <laughs> uh, 
it's it's pretty pretty amazing and then oxygen where melanie laurent is in alejandraja's kind of buried esque simulator where she's inside of a pod that's running out of oxygen so that's worth watching and you know as far as 2021 or it goes i mean it's just been such a gnarly year because only three movies cross the 200 million mark domestically and only one movie crossed 1 billion worldwide which is spider-man no way home i mean in 2019 nine movies cleared a billion in 2018 five movies cleared a billion so it's been a, a unique year for films but it's been fun watching what succeeds and what hasn't succeeded in this time and so like only three movies cleared 200 million in the states and that's spider-man no way home shang chi and venom you know venom let there be carnage I love that it's already crossed $500 million worldwide because it's so weird and it's like such counter programming to everything we've watched. And so I just love that Venom is one of the highest grossing movies domestically and worldwide. It's so scrappy and it's so weird. And yeah, I, I don't even know if the second one, the plot doesn't, I mean, I get where it's going, but it's so all over the place, but I still adore it because it's funky and I give a lot of things a pass when it feels like something I've never seen before. And what Tom Hardy is doing in these movies is beautiful and should be applauded. And then I guess if you don't haven't heard about the highest grossing worldwide films of the year, it's Spider-Man, the only movie to Spider-Man No Way Home, the only movie to make over a billion. Then it's the battle at Lake uh, Changjin, which is a Chinese film. Uh, Hi Mom as well. I mean, that's another uh, film that was released in China. Both of them did not really receive releases here in the States. And it's just showing how powerful the market is. Uh, just not in the stage. It shows how the market, the box office is evolving and how there's other huge players in the market right now. And then that's rounded out by No Time to Die and Fast 9, which Bond always makes bank. And Fast 9 is such a worldwide phenomenon that that's still blowing up. And also Fast 9 also features the best candy bars in space. I got to give it to that. But yeah, that's kind of my breakdown of 2021. I know it's a random episode, but I just did this to say thank you. I did this to say thank you to by listening to me. That's a random thing. But I just wanted to give you something different to listen to. Let you know that I really appreciate everyone listening. I know there's so many other things to listen to. Thank you for listening to me ramble. I plan on rambling more in 2022. And also just give me some feedback. Send me a message. Let me know what movies you want to hear about. Let me know if you have any questions you want me to answer. Just let me know what guests you love the most. Don't tell me the ones you dislike. I don't need to hear that. Tell me the ones you love. Be positive. But yeah, you're just, I really appreciate it. Without you, I mean, I'd probably be still talking to myself and then editing and then, you know, taking out 67% of all the ums to make it seem like, hey, like there's not many ums, but there's still some ums. So like, I'm not all like sterile sounding, but it's, it makes it worth it. I mean, the audience is growing and the site is growing. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's all growing. And that's because of you. And I just really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy these recommendations. I hope you enjoy my rambling. And just, I hope you have a great 2022. I'm wishing you the best. I think greatness is going to come for all of you. Uh, you're all going to win the lotto. You all, I mean, anything good, right? Can That will happen in 22 will happen to you. You know, you'll find a quarter. But then that quarter will be from like 1786 and will end up being a gold doubloon that, you know, was owned by Blackbeard. And you just found it somewhere in Florida. And then you take it to Antique Roadshow and you make a cool mill. Like that's your 2022. And that's the way I hope it's going to be. So just thank you so much. So for me, Mark Hoffmeyer, this is Movie Sons of Flicks. We'll see you next week.